Okay, so I had you go about that with the skills and tools in your toolbox that you already had, right? And it was kind of a struggle. So after the struggle at the board, would you like an easier way to decide if a function is continuous? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about what to do when we don't know that part yet, and we're going to get to that part, okay? Because y'all, most of you, you all kind of have this, the right idea at the beginning of like, I'm going to try and graph it, and sometimes it's fine ballparking things. You, and most of you are worried about your x's being right and kind of ballparking your y's, which sometimes works just fine. But in this particular case, we needed to know if things actually matched up. So we had, it didn't have to be an accurate, beautiful graph, but you need like your numbers to be accurate. So let's kind of draw a not so great sketch over here, but we'll get something in here. So if I, I know that I have, would you agree that this is a piece of a line, a piece of a parabola, and two more pieces of lines? Right? So the four functions that are represented in here by the pieces themselves, like whatever piece of the line I'm going to draw, whatever piece of the parabola I'm going to draw, that piece is continuous because we know lines are and parabolas are, right? So no question about the middle part. So our question is really just how it hooks up in a, in a piecewise function, right? So we know that we get this first line, 2x minus 1, only when x is less than negative 2. So I'm just going to do this 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3 here. And um, so when x is ne at negative 2, I know I'm going to have an open circle because it's not less than or equal to. <clears throat> if I substitute negative 2 in here, what do I get? Negative what? Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So I'll have, let's just say this is negative 5. Good enough. Okay. So I'm at negative 2, negative 5, open circle. I don't really care about my slope and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I care about the slope, but I don't have to go plotting points, and that's a giant open circle. But I do know it's positive, so I know it would look like this, and that gives me something. Okay, that's good enough for what we're doing there. So then I'm going to do this next piece, which is part of a parabola. Now, something I do know about this parabola, which could kind of help us with this graph, is that it's just the parent function minus 9, so what does that do to the graph? It just brings it down. So instead of being at the origin at 0, 0, minus 9, it just drops it down here. So we can say, all right, well, then we'll, we'll make this negative whew, 9. And that's where the vertex is. You wouldn't necessarily have to know that, but it can kind of help us some, right? So then um, this starts at negative 2. And because of this, I will have a closed circle. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So I'm going to start here at negative 2, negative 5, but with a closed circle. So it kind of fills in that hole that we had, right? And then I know my parabola comes down like this because that's the vertex, but then i got to figure out where it stops because I can only go until x is less than 1. So I want to substitute 1 in. So 1 squared minus 9 is negative 8. So at negative 8, which we can ballpark right about there, is where I have an open circle. So, so far right now, well, it's about time. Where were you? Yeah, that's what, that's what everybody was saying. So, from this line segment to the parabola part, is this section continuous? Do I have to pick up my pencil here? No, I don't, because there was a hole there, but we filled it in with that point. You with me? So if you have your piecewise functions, they can only be discontinuous where the little, um, well, when we have lines of parabolas, only where they connect. So only at like negative 2. And at negative 2, it's continuous. So now basically we check 1. And we went here, we have this open circle. So now I'm going to move on to the next piece of the line. When I substitute in this 1, 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So I'm actually starting up here at 5 with a closed circle at 1, 5. And then I'm going to go till I substitute in 3. 3 times 3 is 9, 10, 11. Oh, I probably should have made that not as big. It's not great to scale, but it's fine. And this is open, right? Something like that. Then I have 4x minus 1. So let me ask you this then. At 1, is this continuous? No. What kind of discontinuity do I have at 1? A jump, okay? And I ended at 3. So now I'm going to start back over at 3. When I substitute 3 in here, 
that's going to end up giving me 11. Is that what we already had? Wait, what? 9, 10, 11. Yeah, so I get 11 again, but do I get to close it up? No, I don't. And it's steeper, so it looks something like this and with a little arrow. So at 3, is it continuous? No. What kind of discontinuity do we have? Point. Okay. Does that make sense? And really, with the tools that you have, that's kind of how you can figure out continuity here. But there is a much easier way. All right. And um, I mean, it takes some writing and some calculus knowledge with it, but it works. Uh, so let's answer this question first. The piecewise function, so we can say we have a non-removable non jump disk for disk continuity at, and you can just put the, all you have to do is put the x value, at x equals 1. And then removable slash point discontinuity at x equals 3. Now, if this was a free response question, you wouldn't necessarily have to write all of that because the question says, well, it does say to classify. So it's not real specific. On um, the other one, it said like classify as removable or non-removable, and that would have been enough and not had to say this. But I'm saying it all because I want you to understand that there are all the names and stuff, and you know, it's always it's fine to write extra. It's not fine to not write enough. So let's look at what's happening here. The limit, if I asked you for the limit as x approaches negative two from the left of h of x. What is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left? Negative 5. And the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of h of x is what? Negative 5. Because we substituted in this negative 2 here, because this would be from the left, because I'm coming, everything that's less than that. This is from the right. We got the same value. That's why the open circle and the point kind of snap together. Okay, we good with that? So limit from the left, limit from the right. It was continuous, right? So let's write down, I'm going to run out of room probably. We might have to write some down here as well, and that's okay. Um, let's write, we have the limit. As x approaches, now the next part was 1. As x approaches 1 from the left of h of x, when we approach 1 from the left, what was our limit? Negative, it was negative 8, right? I didn't write it down, but negative 8. And then the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of h of x, what's that? 5. So still substituting them in like we did, but we don't have to draw it all and visualize it necessarily. I can tell you right now, since the limits from the left and the right are not the same, that there's no way that it's going to match up, right? So let's go ahead and jump down here to write this. The next part we had was 3. Whew. The next part we had was 3. So the limit... As x approaches 3 from the left of h of x, we approach it from the left. What was our limit? 11. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right of h of x is what? 11. Okay, so let's look at what we've got. See if we can come up with what we really need to know for continuity. Clearly, limit from the left, limit from the right, not the same. That's because we had a jump discontinuity there, right? And that's what you've been looking at when we've been doing it with graphs most of the time, right? Um, but here, the limit from the left and limit from the right were the same, and it's continuous. Here, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are not are the same, but it's not continuous, right? So these are both equal. This one ended up being continuous. This one was not. So do you think just being having the limit from the left and the right be the same, is that enough? 
No, what else do you think we have to have? The what? Y values, right? So not only do I have to, so let me ask you this. What is f of negative 2? Let's write it down. I'm running out of colors to make it. Um, f, what is f of negative 2? Negative 5, because it's from, yeah. If I substitute in negative 2, well, actually, you would only substitute it into 1. You'd substitute it in this one, right, because it's included. You get negative 5. This one we don't care about, really, because we already know it's discontinuous. What is f of 3? Undefined. You can put undefined or D and E, either one. Um, but either way, you wouldn't put an equal sign. Okay, yes. What did I say, H? Oh, I did say F. Dang it. I'm sorry, thank you. Is that why y'all are similar? Yeah, I think because I saw that. We're not doing that one right now. So just ignore that. Um, yes, it is H, thank you, not F. Didn't, didn't mean to confuse things there. The function we were working with. <clears throat> but H of negative 2? is negative 5, right? And h of 3 is undefined. You agree with that? So we have to, we know, if we know that the limit from the left and the right are the same, and what else do we need to know? The value, the value actually exists as well, right? And I, not, we don't care, and they're, and they're all equal. Not just that it exists, but then they all have to be equal. Because I could have had, <clears throat> I could have had this, like there could be a random point right here, right? We don't have that. But at that h of x would exist, but it's not going to be the same. So they have to, at the, the point has to exist, the limit has to exist, and then they all have to be equal. Those are the three parts of it being continuous. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so let's look at, you got to hear at 55, right? Let's see, let's, well, I hope y'all didn't mark this one out, did you? hope you didn't, because let's do this one. I didn't realize that one was a C one. So let me just mark. I think this is going to give us plenty of, we have plenty of room on this one. If not, we'll just go into the next one. I've tried to fix some of these notes to give us more room, but I didn't, I still haven't won a lot of them. Okay, so we want to know, is it continuous at x equals 2 and justify your answer? So we're going to look at that, and we're going to formalize what we're going to say, and then we'll actually write the official rules tomorrow. So really the easiest thing to do, because remember, the point has to exist, the limit has to exist, and then all three have to be equal. So the first thing you can check is if the point exists, because if it doesn't, then you're done, right? So we can see, and we have to actually show that we did it, that f of, and it said, is it continuous at x equals 2? And that's where the pieces come together. So wherever you have room here, f of 2 equals, which one do we substitute it into? The second one, right? So it's 5 times 2 minus 7. And that gives me 3. That by itself doesn't really tell me anything, right? But I need it. So then we're going to look at the limits. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x. And you could write of from the left, you could write x squared plus x minus 3. But again, just write f of x so you don't accidentally copy something wrong. And then when you actually substitute it in, you're substituting it into that, but then you drop your limit statement, right? So I get 2 squared plus 2 minus 3. So that's 4 plus 2, which is 6, minus 3, which is 3, right? Then the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x equals... So that's when it's greater than, I'm going to have 5 times 2 minus 7, which gives me 3. Now, almost everything I wrote is what you would have to write. I will underline the things that you could skip, but you may not want to skip. And all that is is that. And you could skip that, I guess, and this and this. I don't suggest it. But the rest of this stuff has to be there. Even if you can just glance up there and know what it is and, oh, know that they're equal, you have to state that in what you do. Okay? Does that make sense to you? So the limit from the left, the, the point exists. The limit from the left and the right exists. And therefore, it is continuous. Okay? And we didn't have to graph anything. We didn't really care what it looks like. So in order to state that, even though we've just shown it, we have to put it in words. 
And we, we could say something like this. Um, B, so f of x is continuous at x equals 2. Okay, notice I can't just say yes and I can't say it is continuous. I have to say what I'm talking about and where because maybe it's discontinuous somewhere else, right? f of x is continuous at x equals 2 because I just like b slash c or since. You can write the words out. You can write out because, but that's what this order is just kind of what makes sense to me, but there are different ways to word it. Because the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x equals the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x, which equals f of 2, which equals 3. So basically you're saying the limit from the right equals the limit from the left, which equals the function value, which all equals 3, but without writing out all the words. We good with that? This comes up a lot. So, but it's not, so it makes it piecewise not so bad, right? Questions? We good? Okay. So, um, we have about five minutes left, but maybe we should do this one. Maybe we'll, we'll start with this one tomorrow because I do want to do one with the C's in it because they're there. And I don't want to start it right now and us not be able to finish it. So, 